In the last video, we looked at how to load sample libraries in a direct wave, as well as had a quick overview look of the interface. In this video, we'll be looking at editing the zones for the samples. Whenever a sample is loaded into direct wave, it will be mapped to a key on the keyboard. This is in itself a zone. Now, in many cases, you may see that the sample zone is mapped to a single key. However, it is possible to map a zone to more than one key. And in fact, it is possible to map more than one zone to an individual key. Let's begin with the sample library I loaded from the Sample Fusion Content Library. You can see that there are 11 zones, each mapped to its own key. Now for this sample content, which consists of a single loop on one key and the individual beats mapped to their own zones, this zone and method makes sense. But let's take a look at another library. With this library, which consists of a string section, you can see that one zone is mapped across several keys. The reason why this works for this library is because the samples are melodic in nature. So we can use pitch shift technology to produce the various notes. To examine this, the sample that is mapped to this zone has the root key of C2, which is the pitch of the note played before any pitch shifting is applied. So therefore, this key will be mapped to the key of C2. We can then extend this zone so that all keys played below the C2 note will have pitch shifting applied to them in order to play the sample at the correct pitch that corresponds to the note being played. This allows us to get a full range in terms of pitch while lowering the amount of samples needed for the library. Now in this zone, we can get away with this because for these strings, we might not be playing notes far below C2. So the pitch shifting will be adequate for these notes. However, as you can see by the zone mapping the notes between C2 and C7, there are more zones and thus more samples. This is because we want to avoid too much pitch shifting on these notes. So we use more samples. Okay, so now that we know more about why we need to have zones, let's take a look at how to edit them. For the most part, it'll be far easier to edit the zones by clicking and dragging the zone window. By clicking on the top anchor point of the zone, we can extend or decrease the size of our zone. You can see now that as I play the notes below the zone root note of C4, that pitch shifting is applied to the drum loop. It is also possible to move the zone by double clicking it and dragging it to the left or right. Now you may have noticed that there are numbers from the bottom of the zone that increase as the zone moves up. These numbers reflect the velocity of the note and how the zone reacts according to how hard the note was played. For example, here with my drum loop zone, if I was to lower the zone to about 63, every time a note is played with a velocity lower than 63, no sample will be played. Now if I was to take the zone next to it and resize it so that it will only play the sample if the velocity is higher than 63, I can move that zone over and map it to the same key as my beat. Now when I play that key with a lower velocity, the one shot drum sample will play. And when the note is played with higher velocities, the drum beat is played. Now these samples may not be the best example of velocity mapping. A good situation is when mapping one shot drum samples, like I am showing here with this Akai sample library. When a drummer strikes a snare, the tone of the drum will change. Therefore, it would make sense to have more than one sample on the zone so that you can accurately recreate that tone. In this video, we took a look at basic zone editing. In the next video, we'll take a look at creating zones and loading samples into them.